Welcome to part one of the series where I build a Intel Alder Lake gaming system that comprises of an Intel Core i5-12400, an MSI B660-A micro ATX motherboard, 32 gigabytes of G-Skill Ripjaws V memory that's at 3200 megahertz at cast latency 16. We're gonna be using an RTX 3080 12 gigabyte FTW3 that's by EVGA and an EVGA Supernova GA 850 watt gold certified modular power supply. For storage, we went with a Western Digital Black SN850 two terabyte, that's PCIe Gen 4 NVMe solid state drive, along with a micro ATX Zalman M3 Plus case. If you like building computers as much as I do, go ahead and let me know by dropping a like on this video. And if you don't want to miss part two, consider subscribing. If you have any questions, go ahead and let me know in the comment section below. And I will also leave links to all the hardware that's in this video in the description below. No frills, just go straight to the motherboard. What else we got in here? All right, so we do have some accessories. Looks like we have a couple of SATA cables. The I.O. plate. A disc, you have an MSI sticker. Here's how you register. You can use a QR code scanner. Quick installation guide, and you also have screws for M.2 storage. Wow, this is going to be my first Alder Lake install. And for a plain board, this feels like it's got a decent amount of weight to it. You can see these black dims, they come with nice good metal heat spread around. So yeah, this processor comes with a uh, stock heatsink. There it is. Look at this, such an odd shape. It's longer than the uh, previous models. Let's go ahead and take a look at the stock heatsink here. Oh, that's pretty cool. Look at this. It looks like you got a blue inner lining on this fan. You got these same push pins. They look slightly more aesthetic than previous models. And you know what? I thought this would be aluminum, but oddly, <clears throat> oddly enough, this right here is plastic. But the fins down here, they're actually metal. And it looks like you have a copper inner core. And you got pre-applied thermal compound. Along with your PWM four pin connection. Looks like it opens up differently. So it looks like you have asymmetrical notches. One here, one here, one here, and one here. Same thing on this processor. One here, one here, one here, and one here. They're more to the right of the processor than they are to the left. And that's how you line it up. So the biggest advice I could give you is that you wanna make sure that you start by pushing in one pin obviously, but you wanna make sure that the other pin on the opposite side pushes in after that so that you don't have two pushing in on one side cause it's gonna make it really difficult to get those other two pins in. But if you do it diagonally, it's so much easier. And the main goal, let's see if I can get this on camera. I'm gonna show you the back side of this motherboard is that You'll see right here that there's the two plastic pieces that go through the hole and then there's a middle, there's like a middle rod that comes through those two plastic pieces. And you want to make sure that that rod protrudes out to be the same length as those plastic pieces on each end. 
what we're gonna do is there's a CPU fan header right here. It's closest to the CPU. And then we just wanna make sure that we plug it in the right way. There you go. So this right here is the Zalman M3 Plus. And this is an awesome black case. And I feel like the aesthetic of, the, of this case is gonna look amazing with this MSI board over here. But this is gonna be an awesome combination along with the EVGA 3080 12 gig FDW2. So stay tuned for part two of this video. And again, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to leave them in the comment section below. If you have any questions on the hardware used in this video, go ahead and check out the description. I'm gonna leave links to all the hardware I used in this video. Like this video if you liked it, subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next video.